Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And uh, last week we talked about the top 5 Linux distros that I consider the best on a, my subjective base of using them. And today I'm going to look specifically at the desktop environments. So Linux, or what would better be called GNU Linux, uh, for a desktop computer, it breaks down into the Linux distro, which includes the software, the core, the updates, all those things. But all of that is meaningless without the desktop environment that that sits on top of. Some of the distros out there will only support a single desktop environment, like Peppermint was on my list last time. Uh, most Linux distros you can get on a variety of different um, desktop environments. So the desktop environment basically determines how the system looks. And that's where Linux has a lot of power as a desktop user because you can have any package base that you like, um, but... Uh, with any package base that you like, you can have the computer looking any way uh, that you desire. And so once again, this list is fairly subjective uh, because some of it is based on my opinions. I'm not taking it as a, a full-blown, um, this is the best, etc. I'm talking about what I am picking as the best, and I'm going to tell you the reason for those. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and dive on in. Number five, I have selected Mate. Uh, so Mate is not my absolute favorite. A lot of people really like Mate. Um, and there's a lot of power in Mate. It is a one of the, what you might consider one of the older uh, stylistically. Um, and this is kind of where some people fall off the wagon as far as what is the best type of distros to use. Do we want something that's slick and modern or do we want something that we're familiar with? And this is, this is where your own subjective opinion really becomes important because it becomes this big question for us. Um, are, we, are we really looking to have modern for the sake of modern or is there something in our workflow um, that uh, that suggests that. So the Mate desktop, it is a, a fairly old desktop. Of course, I believe it was forked out of GNOME 2. Uh, so this has kind of had an older like appearance, but that doesn't bother me and it doesn't bother a lot of people that really like the Mate experience. Of course, you have your bars. You know, you can either have your, your system bar on the top, on the bottom. You might even be have multiple on them. I don't use Mate enough to know for sure. Uh, and no, correction, I do know you can't have a bar on the top and a bar on the bottom because the Mate computer I do run does that. Um, you can have a variety of different menus from a very simple menu to a more complicated menu. You'd have your basic menu, you have your whisker menu. There's a lot in Mate that's, that's very good. Um, of course, here you can see there's a lot of official Linux distros that have Ubuntu, uh, excuse me, that have Mate in it. So Ubuntu Mate down there, there's Gen 2, Linux Mint has an official uh, Mate, Manjaro, OpenSUSE, you know, just a whole variety of different, um, uh, different Linux builds. The computer behind me, it has Mate as an option. I'm not running a Mate right now, but it does have the Mate as an option. Um, and then, you know, of course, it's also in some uh, other BSD based uh, systems for Unix. And so um, you don't even have to be in the Linux world to be using Mate. And so that's one of the advantages with it. It is, uh, it's not super system heavy. It's very customizable. Um, it does have a slightly older appearance in many ways, although you can customize a lot of the things uh, uh, to make it more modern if you want. Um, and so I've kind of picked Mate for that reason because it is, uh, it is a system that, that a lot of people like. Ubuntu Mate is probably even more popular than the regular Ubuntu right now. And so that's kind of what led me to pick uh, Mate as my number five. Number four, XFCE. This one is one that is also very popular among some users. Uh, I know some of my followers just stick with XFCE all the way. Um, I like XFCE. I don't like it enough that I run it on everything, um, but I do run XFCE, of course, as the core uh, desktop environment in cubes, which I run that a lot. 
Um, and uh, see, there's a few other operating systems. I know I use it a lot as well. Uh, regardless, it has a lot of good function to it. It's extremely customizable and it's extremely lightweight. Um, the only downside that I see is I don't like the way they do their themes and appearances quite as much. It does seem a little more old school to me. Um, but nevertheless, it's a very good, uh, it's a very good system. Um, you can see the information on the about page. Um, there are panels. You can have these panels, a, a good advantage of, of running, uh, XFCE. You can have your panels on the top, on the bottom, on the sides. You can even drop one literally in the middle of your desktop if you want it. <laughs> a lot of different features and functions inside of it. Um, and, uh, it's just a super lightweight system. So if you are looking for a... Uh, Linux distro with uh, for an older computer or one with fewer system resources uh, look into some form of XFCE uh, desktop environment and that is actually a very uh, very good way to go and I believe uh, MX Linux is based on uh, it uses the XFCE desktop environment if I'm remembering correctly then uh, that is that is the case don't quote me exactly number three budgie this is the only one of the super modern desktop environments, uh, i.e. based off of or uh, referenced closely with uh, the GNOME or GNOME 3 desktop environment. Uh, Budgie, if somebody said you had to use one of the modern desktop environments, Budgie would be the one I go with. I'm not a huge fan of the more modern ones, but I do really like what the Budgie team has done. Of course, Budgie is a desktop environment that was developed out of the Solus project. So if you do want to get the best experience of Budgie, uh, you want to be looking at a Solus build. Um, of course, I've used Budgie. The first time I ran Budgie on an actual computer is I ran it on my Manjaro computer um, and I absolutely love my Manjaro budgie build uh, I also ported this onto a Linux Mint computer so I there's no uh, flavor that you can download with that built in um, but I did a video about how to actually do that uh, if you check my video archives but budgie is a very nice system it's not super lightweight but it's not heavy either um, it, it has more customizability than your uh, GNOME 3 desktop, but it's not super customizable. It's just to that kind of fine point. It's basic enough that there's not an overwhelming amount of options for a new user, but it doesn't have absolutely no configuration, so you can uh, kind of turn it a little bit more into your own. It's also very modern in its looks and its appearances, so if you are looking for a more modern look to your computer, uh, Budgie is... is a very very good way to go my number two pick for desktop environments is KDE so KDE is the oldest desktop environment for the GNU Linux desktop and so it has a lot of history the downside of KDE as many people suggest is there are so many configuration options it is actually possible to get lost in the configurations um, however, if you do want something that is a very highly customizable desktop that works very well, uh, KDE is the way to go, especially with the current, um, the current one, uh, which is the Plasma build, um, then your, uh, the, the Plasma 5 is actually a fairly lightweight desktop. That's actually what I'm running on the computer behind me is Debian currently running uh, KDE. And uh, the other thing that KDE has, though, that is quite a bit different is its entire uh, its entire platform. the uh, The other one that is uh, that is based on the similar uh, issue is is the GNOME desktop. There's also the Qt desktop, um, and so. Uh, with this, you have a whole variety of KDE applications. So, for example, I use Kden Live as my video editor. The KDE team puts a lot of work into uh, an entire suite of KDE applications. And uh, these are various applications that will absolutely work the best on a KDE computer, but they'll work well in, in other places as, as well. And so, you know, you can uh, come in and have a look at the variety of different uh uh, the variety of different uh, applications to be used with the KDE platform. Of course, Kmail, Conquer is a is a browser. There's wireless managers, IRC chats. There's just a whole variety, and this is what allows you to have a KDE system that has all of its own built-in 
uh, tools and apps. Of course, if you want to get the cleanest experience of KDE, look at KDE Neon, which uh, some people say is a distro, some people just say is a staging environment. According to KDE's own um, uh, documentation, Neon is a testing ground for KDE applications, but that actually makes it a very nice distro to uh, to try out just the, the pure KDE experience. And this is based, I believe it's based on Ubuntu. They're also working on the mobile build for, uh, for mobile phone builds. And there's a variety of other things to do in the KDE environment as well. So thanks for watching this video. Before we get into our number one pick for desktop environments, I just wanted to point out that you can check out uh, switchlinux.com forward slash support to learn about all of the current ways that you can help support this channel. My number one pick is Cinnamon. The reason I pick Cinnamon first is because it gives a user experience, a user workflow very similar to a Windows platform. So if you are coming from a Windows system, then check out Cinnamon. It is going to be one of the best. Of course, uh, Cinnamon is a project of the Linux Mint team. Um, Linux Mint is showcased with the Cinnamon build, uh, but it's more than just a desktop environment. They do have entire projects pages. Um, so inside of the projects page, this is all of the different applications that you can get inside of a cinnamon. So if you port cinnamon to another distro for whatever reason, you have a variety of different options as far as, uh, Nemo is the entire file manager. Um, they have their own, um, their own widgets and things for their spices. They have their menus, um, uh, the control centers, just a variety of different options inside of there. They also have um, a lot of different Mint specific applications that you can actually port over, including the Mint drivers, which allows you to do uh, your driver, uh, driver updates a lot easier. The installation process, and this is probably why the new Ubuntu um, tracking stuff isn't necessarily going to impact the Mint people because they do have their own installer things. Uh, now this is specifically for the applications, however, not the, not the um, uh, system itself. They have a lot of their own themes and icons, uh, a welcome screen, just a lot of different applications, um, uh, a lot of different applications for, um, uh, for the Mint team as well. So the, the uh, Cinnamon team uh, is really based on getting a system that is very, uh, very polished, very um, user friendly. And also it's one of those desktop environments that although it maintains that older format of like a Windows computer, it also is a more modern type system. So you can have this very much looking like a modern desktop or you can actually make it look like an older desktop. So if you like the old 95 look, you can do it. If you like the Windows XP, or excuse me, like the Windows uh, 7 uh, era, you can do that. If you like the Windows 10 look era of your uh, status bar and taskbar, you can do that as well. It's a very modern system. Um, it's not super heavyweight. Again, it's not super lightweight either, uh, but it is pretty good for your average run-of-the-mill system. Cinnamon is a very good system. So that concludes my list of my top five desktop environments for the first part of 2018. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.